call to worship today is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh not evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Amen. Amen. No, we are are glad that you are with us and that you chose to be with us today to worship the lord i've been had a had a word that's been on my mind for uh, a little while now a couple weeks but really on my mind this 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 past week and i think it's a word that if you will apply to your life not just uh one day or two day but really allow this word to uh, be a part of just everyday life, I think that it gives you an opportunity to really experience some wonderful, wonderful things. And um, that word is gratitude. Gratitude. And I know some of you are thinking, wow, way to go, Pastor Mike. That's, couldn't, couldn't you come up with something a little more original or maybe something a little better than just gratitude, right? We just had Thanksgiving. That's pretty easy, but I'm going to ask you to cut me some slack today. Uh, give me a break today, uh, right? Thanksgiving holiday weekend. I've had way too much turkey. Um, so a, a, a lot of things going on. So you might need to... Uh, Lower your expectations for this message today. Is that fair enough? All right. But, but gratitude. That's what I've been thinking about. Gratitude and how important it is in our lives. And um, of course, how many of you know, right, you should be grateful, right? You know that you should be grateful for the things that you have. You should be grateful for all the wonderful things that you get to experience, and we all know that we should be. We should be grateful. And um, this Thanksgiving is just another reminder of that. Here we probably all, this past week, probably all experienced similar, uh, if not the exact same thing, uh, during Thanksgiving. For me, it started Thanksgiving Day about noon we went over to uh, to my niece's and her husband's house and so we we ate at what one around one o'clock i mean the whole nine yards i mean everything and so that was at one o'clock and then we were scheduled right the schedule said we have to eat again over at misty's sister's house john and jessica's house at 4 30 right and so Obviously, I'm not hungry at 4.30 because I just blew it at 1, but the schedule said that it's time to eat. So what do you do when the schedule says it's time to eat? That's right. We eat. And, um, and so you, you probably experience similar things and have experienced similar things. And again, we are blessed and uh, blessed in our abundance and blessed with uh, the people around us. And so, yes, we have lots to be grateful for. I think one of the things that happens when, when you're truly grateful and thankful for the things in your lives, I think you also kind of a, just a, it, it, it leads to being, to, to be generous, right? I, I think I think gratitude, once you're grateful and thankful for some things, I think that just leads you to uh, becoming more generous. And so I want to talk about that uh, today as well, gratitude and generosity. Now, over the past couple of weeks, that's really kind of what we've been leaning into, right? Giving, becoming givers, not just takers, but being generous. And, and kind of we focused our attention the past couple of weeks about reaching out and helping people who are in some kind of need, right? I mean, a few weeks ago, we, 
we, uh, uh, we sent out uh, Christmas gifts to uh, right, children uh, all around the world. We, we kind of partnered up with Operation Christmas Child and we partnered up with Samaritan's Purse. And so we get to be a, a little part of seeing some children get some Christmas gifts that they probably would never have ever received. And so, again, reaching out, helping those who have a need. The most important thing, they're going to get their hands, right? Some kiddos are going to get their hands on and families are going to get their hands on the good news of the gospel. And so there's booklets in there. And so we get to be a part of that. And of course, last week, David Smith and his family were here and we partnered up with them and help support them to go and, and spread the good news of the gospel behind some prison doors, right? Some of us never will be in that position to go and minister to, to, to those people in need, but we were able to support and send some people who will be. And so they're gearing up to go and, and to do that. And again, to share the good news of the gospel, reaching out to some people who have some needs, just looking for ways to be giving. And so gratitude, generosity, uh, they just go hand in hand. Uh, I think you could throw uh, contentment in there too. I think a person, if you have, uh, if you have some generosity, um, if you're thankful and grateful for the things that you have, I think that goes a long way in being content uh, with whatever lot you find yourself in. And so that's where we want to lean into, yeah, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And I want to look for ways to give. And my heart is content. Um, <clears throat> but the hope is, and my hope is, that yeah we've done that the past couple of weeks but my hope is that that's not just a you know a, a one-time thing i think of it a lot like thanksgiving right here at thanksgiving the all the focus right all the attention on is being thankful well uh, hopefully we're thankful every day of the year right i remember what well, this past summer we spent almost two months on prayer if you remember back that far but we went through and we talked about prayer and and I had asked the question, hey, if, there's one, if you knew God was going to answer one of your prayers for sure, guarantee, what would that prayer be? And we spent, we spent two months talking about the importance of prayer. Um, but I, hopefully after we got done with those two months, you just didn't quit praying, right? You just... Right? You, just like being thankful, you continue to be thankful every day, and I'm sure you pray, right? You pray every day. And I think it's the same way with, um, with, uh, with, with being generous. We just look for ways uh, to be giving and to help those people around us. <clears throat> Gratitude and generosity. I think those two things and more all flow out of a heart of love. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's the goal. Uh, the goal is to have love that's inside your heart to come out, right? <clears throat> we want to, to, uh, to not just keep that inside, we want to share that and we want to let that flow out of our lives and into the lives of other people. That's important because Jesus said that it's important, uh, this thing called love. And in fact, Jesus said that the greatest commandment, when he was asked, what's the, what's the greatest commandment in the Bible? Jesus said that the greatest commandment is love. Love God and then love others. And it's not just a one-time thing or a couple times a month, or, but right? You, do, you love God and you love other people consistently over and over and over. You will do the right things. That's just right. And so Jesus said the greatest, the greatest commandment is love. Now Paul said, and Susan read part of that passage in 1 uh, Corinthians, right? We call that the love chapter, chapter 13. 
But the Apostle Paul said that love is it's not only is it the greatest commandment, it's the greatest virtue. It's the greatest virtue that you could have. And, and down in verse 13 of chapter 13, Paul says this. He said, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, right? <clears throat> Why would Paul say the greatest of these is love? Well, I can think of one reason, because when you get to heaven and you get to see Jesus face to face, okay, you're, you're not going to need faith, right? You're, you're, you're going to see Jesus face to face, and so now in heaven you're going to live by sight, right? You're going to live by sight, and you won't need hope. Because hope, the Bible says, is going to be realized. And so at that time, you won't need faith. You won't need hope. Faith and hope's going to be gone, but love will remain. Right? Love will always remain. Um, love will mark our lives for all eternity. Wherever you go, you take love with you. And so love's the greatest commandment. It's the... It's, it's the greatest virtue, but I believe that love is also the best indicator to know that you're kind of following um, where the Holy Spirit is leading, and I've said that before. If you really want to know that you're, <clears throat> that you're following Jesus, just ask yourself if you are more loving. I think it's a really good indicator uh, if you're allowing God to, to work in your life and if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to move, if you can just say, okay, am I more loving? Okay, Are you more loving to your friends? Are you more loving to your family? Are you more loving to those people around you? And um, if so, right, you're not always going to get it perfect, Right? Not always going to get it all right, but if you can say, yeah, you know what, I am becoming more loving. I can see that. You know that, hey, you're allowing God to, to come through and to work in you and through you. And it's not a selfish love. It's not, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do this for you or I'll help you out so that I can get something back. You scratch my back, I'll scratch. It's not that. It's, it's more of a selfless love, a love that just says, you know what, I'm doing this just because love is inside and I've got to let it out. And so I'm going to love you unconditionally. You might not even deserve it, but I'm still going to love you because that's just who I am. Right? I'm a person who wants to express love um, because God has just showered me with his goodness. Love, I think, is it's also the goal of preaching. Um, I've got about 20 more minutes or so uh, to preach, but go, that's, 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 that's the goal. The, the hope is, uh, after, after this message and, and most messages, um, the goal is that the love of God the love of God inside of you would become the love of God through you so that you're, you're pouring out uh, the love of God that's inside of you to those around you. The Bible says that God loved us first, and we sang about that in, in that song this morning, God loved you first, and so the response to that is you should love others, and the Bible verse for that is 1 John 4, 19, right? 1 John 4, 19, great memory verse, and that verse says we love because God first loved us, right? 1 John 4, 19, and I know some of you, that's, that's kind of your go-to scripture. I remember when we put carpet, remember when this carpet, wow, it seems like a long, long time ago, but we put carpet down and we had you to write your favorite memory verses down, and before they put the carpet down, they had the plywood and the stuff, and so we wrote down Bible passages and we wrote down uh, scripture because we wanted to be able to say, hey, we're standing on the Word of God, and that's what we did. And so you sent in favorite Bible verses, and I remember writing down and seeing 1 John 4, 19 over here and there and back there, and there's just lots of different places. 
God loved you when really, right, you were unlovable, loved me, but yet God did that for us when we were in a place that really wasn't great. And so, yeah, God loves us, and so we love others. And of course, yeah, Jesus wants you to love everybody, All right? That's everybody. Love your friends, love your family. Uh, Jesus even says, love your your enemies, right? And I know the IU Purdue game was yesterday and there's just a lot of rivalry going on, but God says, love your enemies, right? Love your enemies. And uh, so that's what we want to do and that's who we want um, to be. Love everybody. Now Jesus did emphasize a group of people that he said, now, you really need to pay attention and you really need to love these people. And so Jesus emphasized a group of people that we need to make sure that we're loving. And really, those are the people that we've been talking about the past few weeks. Uh, Jesus said to love those who are hurting, who are broken, um, to love the overlooked to love the underserved, uh, to love those people who, uh, for whatever reason, are without. Jesus says, be sure, while you're loving everybody, be sure to love those people too. You remember Jesus had siblings. Uh, as he was growing up, they were all half-siblings. Uh, they had the same mom, Mary, uh, but his half-siblings, right? Uh, they all had Joseph as their father. Uh, only Jesus had God as his father. And so they were all half-siblings. And one of his, his half-brothers, a guy by the name of James, uh, James, the half-brother of Jesus, said this in James chapter 2, verse 15, when he was talking about, if you really want to know what true faith looks like, this is what it looks like. In James chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or without daily food. Okay, you got a brother or a sister, doesn't have any food, doesn't have anything to, 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 to wear. If one of you says to them, uh, go in peace, keep warm, well fed, but does nothing for their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith all by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. James is saying, you know what, it's, 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 it's not enough to just always, someone comes and, and has a need and you see a need and you just always just say, well, it'll be okay, just go on, move on. James is saying there are times. There are times when God will put you in a position where you're actually going to be able to, to help. And, and whatever that looks like, and that could look like a lot of different things at a lot of different times to a lot of different people, but James is saying there just are times when you're going to be able to take some action and actually do some stuff that will really help somebody out. David talks a lot about that throughout his Psalms, and uh, that was another series that we went through. Remember the, the Psalms that we went through, and David would write these Psalms. Sometimes he would write them when things were great and things were wonderful, and just uh, he was experiencing the blessings of God and the favor of God, and he was just writing Psalms of thanksgiving. But then there are other times when David was really helpless, hopeless, and uh, sometimes he got in that fix all by himself, but there were other times when life just happened, and David found himself flat on his face, and he was in a time of need, and so he would write these psalms. Psalm 41, I don't have time to go into a lot of that, but David writes Psalm 41, and he says there, opening up that psalm, he says, blessed are those who consider the poor. Blessed are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. Now, 
Uh, I got to looking at that word consider because I just I thought it was interesting. Um, consider uh, because I don't know when 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 I hear that word consider. Um, I don't know about you, but when when somebody asks you to do something for them or to help them out, and you say, "I'll consider that." Uh, to me, that means I ain't doing it, right? Is that is that kind of how that how we use consider now? If, if if somebody says, you know, if somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, will you do this?" and I said, "Well, let me consider that." Um, that's probably me saying, um, I'm just not going to do that. But that's really not what that word means. The NIV tries to help it out a little bit. It translates it this way. It says, blessed are those who have regard. <laughs> blessed are those who have regard for the weak. And, and that's a little better, but it still doesn't get what, what that word is trying to, to, to get across to us. That word consider actually means, yeah, I'm going to think about it, I'm going to consider it, but I'm considering it to the extent of I'm going to try my best to take a step and find a solution. Uh, I might not be the solution, but I'm going to consider everything that's going on in this situation, and I'm going to take a step to try to help in any way that I can. Let me consider that. And so David is saying, look for opportunities to step into a situation where you can help. Now, there's a book out there uh, that's titled, when, when Helping Hurts. I don't know if you've ever read that book or come across that book, but it's called, When Helping Hurts. And the premise of that book is this, that sometimes in our best intentions to help somebody, <laughs> we actually end up hurting them, right? And in our best intention of trying to do something good and trying to be helpful, we actually do more damage than we do good. Does anybody, <laughs> right, that happens. That happens sometimes in our attempts to, 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 to help and to step in. In fact, one of the chapters in that book, When Helping Hurts, talked about uh, trying to help somebody out financially. And the author of that book says that when you just throw money at a situation, oftentimes, if you just throw money at, at a person, um, oftentimes that's not going to fix it. It actually hurts uh, that person in the long run uh, because now they're dependent on you. If you don't, right, if you just throw money at something um, and you don't come alongside to encourage and to help, and it's just like a, a person, I'm not saying this happens all the time, but but if you just throw money at, at somebody who, who needs something and you don't come alongside of them and, 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 and share with them about God's goodness and the promises of God and uh, stepping out in, in, in faith and, and turning to the Lord and, and if you don't walk alongside of somebody, you can throw sometimes all the money in the world at something and it's just not going to get any better. Is that fair enough? Uh, and so that's kind of what, uh, what that talks about. But even then, right, the goal is always to help, right? The goal is always to find a way to, right, love inside to, to, to be on display and help, all right? We just don't want to keep love. It. We want to, to share and we want to give and we want to be a blessing, right? An answer to somebody's prayer that we've talked about. So the goal is always to find a way uh, to help. Again, whatever that looks like, and maybe it is just being open to pray. And some, you know, some people say, well, you're just praying about it. No, praying's a big deal, right? Praying's a big deal. And so maybe you just start with that. Let me be open. Okay, there's a situation and there's a need. 
Lord, help me to pray about that. Help me to pray for this person. Help me to pray for that situation. And Lord, if you can use me, if there's something that I can do, then show me. Show me how I can help. Lord, show me what to do. Maybe I can make somebody's day better. Maybe you can make some family's uh, Christmas better. Maybe you can, right, they're just all kinds of things, but Lord, show me what I can do, and then help me to take a step of faith and a step of action to really try to meet that need. And so I know the question is, okay, why? Why would you do this, right? Being thankful, grateful, <sighs> striving for contentment, being generous, reaching out to others in their time of need, trying to do some good things for other people, right? The underserved, the overlooked, those who are hurting and broken. Why do that? Well, it's a part of our Great Commission, right? It's what we've been talking about for a long, long time now, the, the Great Commission, reaching out to those who are in need, trying to help a brother out, right? Just, just trying to do our part. And a lot of times what happens when you help somebody out, their response is, why would you do that? Right? Why are you helping me? Why are you spending your time on me? And it's a great opportunity to just share with them. You know what? God has been good to us. Right? God has been good to me. And um, I believe that God will be good to you. Uh, I believe that God has some things for you. And so it's an opportunity to share the goodness of God. And when you reach out to people, right, in love and with love, uh, there's just a lot of people who sees that. When you reach out and you're giving, uh, people notice that. People actually like to be around people who think about other people. Uh, um, but when you're good to other people, um, you know who sees that? Your, your family sees that. Um, your friends see how you're reaching out and trying to, to help people. Um, your kids, your kids definitely see that. Uh, do you know that the things that you do as you just live your life that you do some things over and over and over, your kids think that that's just normal. Ever think about that? The things that you do, your kids just think that that's normal. Now that might scare some of you, right? It's like, oh no. So, so if, you're watching a, if you're watching a football game and you're yelling and screaming at the TV and you do that over and over and over, at some point, those kiddos, when they're watching a game, guess what? They're going to yell and they're going to scream at that TV thinking that the officials really can hear you and really going to be able to do something about it, right? That's just normal to them. That's just how they grew up. That's just normal. Uh, just like somebody who goes to a steakhouse and orders a catfish sandwich, right? You do that over and over at that. Your kids are just, your kids are just going to, oh, well, that's what you do. You order fish at the steakhouse. That's just normal. I'm just saying, whatever you do in life, it becomes normal for your kids. And thankfully... And prayerfully, that goes the same with, with being grateful and being generous. Uh, if you love the less fortunate, if you reach out to, to some people in need, you extend a hand to somebody, again, guess who sees that? Your kids see that. Your family sees that. And they're going to think that that's just normal. It's normal to give a hundred bucks to a family at Christmas time to help them out, right? It just becomes normal. But what are you doing spending 50 bucks on Christmas presents that we're going to send to Brazil, right? Why would you do that, right? There's some kids who would, who would balk at that. Say, well, why are you going to do that? Why can't you just spend some of that money on me, right? But, just saying, 
when you have an environment and you set a pattern in your home that that's what we do, your kids are just going to think, well, that's just normal. And they'll go through life and they'll think that reaching out and helping people is just, that's what you do. That's who we are, actually, right? And you just go through that and they won't think a thing about it. Helping somebody out, giving something to somebody, that's just who we are. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Right? And that's true. Now, are there times when your kiddos are going to, right? I don't like that. That's not. But when they get older, they're going to realize, you know what? That's just who we are. We want to love those people around us and we want to help those people around us. We love uh, that scripture, right? 1 John 4, 19. We love because God first loved us. And we're generous because God is so giving to us. Uh, next week. Next week's the first Sunday in Advent. Right? Tonight we're going to come. And those who want to come, we're going to decorate the church for Christmas. Can you believe it? Uh, Christmas is here, right? Christmas is just right around the corner, and it's a time when we celebrate God's gift to us, the greatest gift ever given, His Son, Jesus Christ. And so God models giving. Um, Jesus gives us just the gift of, of hope and peace and joy and love in our lives. We have hope in Christ. Jesus comes to us in our time of need every day. I mean, comes today, will come tomorrow, always trying to, to woo us and, and bring us into a strong, right relationship with Him. And of course, yeah, Jesus comes right now, today, but He is coming again. I was reading through uh, the book of Hosea, and it's David Smith's fault, actually, because you remember last week he talked about the book of Hosea. And so while he was up here, I was back there behind the sound booth, and I was flipping through the pages of Hosea last week. And, and in that, there's a passage in there um, that talks about um, Jesus coming. Uh, chapter, chapter 6, verse 3 and um, this is what that says. It says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. And so what's the prophet saying here? Well, he's saying you can't stop God from coming after you. You just cannot stop him. You know, just, he's the, Jesus is the, the great shepherd, right? And you get that picture, he's going to chase after his sheep. And you can run, and you can try to hide, and you can go on your way, or you can just kind of, right? Jesus, the great shepherd, he comes looking for you. He comes after you. In fact, in the margins of my Bible there, as I was flipping through Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, I have these words right down in, in the margins of my Bible. It says, I can't stop Jesus from coming after me. Right? I can't stop him from coming after me. As surely as the sun rises, right? He's going to come after you. And just like in the morning, you can go out there and stand all, all morning long. And you can tell the sun not to come up. And you can do all kinds of things. But guess what? The sun's coming up in the morning. And this scripture says that as sure as that's going to happen, Jesus is coming. And he comes for you. And he wants a relationship with you. And yeah, you can balk at that and you can say thanks but no thanks and you can go on your way and what a tragedy that is. But Jesus is not going to stop coming after you, your friends, the people you're praying for. 
and he's looking for people to say yes, right? The invitation is always, always open as surely as the sun rises. And so his love for you is to experience hope, um, to have a heart of gratitude, uh, to be generous and giving, right? We want to be givers, don't want to be takers. And I think all of that just leads to uh, a life of, of contentment. Paul would say, hey, I'm content. I know what it's like to have nothing. And I'm content. And Paul would also say, I know what it's like to have everything and still be content knowing that I can give some of that away. I was reminded in closing here, Matthew chapter 25 this week, talking again about Jesus coming. Matthew 25 says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. Right? Again, it's almost Christmas time. The first time Jesus came, He came very humbly. Right? Well, just a couple angels that announced the, the birth to just a few shepherds out in the field. Right? Jesus came very humbly. But that passage in Matthew 25 and other passages tell us that when Jesus comes again, and he is coming again, Amen. when he comes again, he's not coming in humility, he's coming in glory. Um, we sang that song, Glory, right? Glory to his name. We sang that glory. And I like that passage because... Not just a couple of angels coming with Jesus. It says here that when he comes in his glory, all of the angels are going to be with him. And you may have to close your eyes and just think and kind of get that picture. What a glorious sight that will be. When you talk about all of the angels in the sky with Jesus, that's going to be amazing. Jesus is coming. But he also comes now. Right? The invitation is come. Right? That's, the, that's, the, that's the invitation that Jesus always has, come to me. Right? He'll, he'll come and he will, he will, he will chase you down. And he will woo you into the things that he has for you. And so the invitation is always open. Jesus wants you to, to come and to experience his goodness um, and his hope and his peace and his love and his joy that's only found through him. And when you do that, then you're able to step back like we have this Thanksgiving, and say, thank you. Thank you for your goodness, and thank you for the life that you've given me. And so there can be gratitude and generosity as we look for ways to give, and it really leads to a life of contentment. And so um, as we close, um, I'm going to ask if our musicians would come, and uh, in our chorus book, let us sing... I will serve thee, um, but uh, let's first go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for every family. Uh, so good that uh, we're able to come and be a part of this worship experience just to give you thanks and and people see that, and uh, it's, it's not just a one-time deal, it's just who we are, it's what we do. We just come and we just thank you because you're so good to us. And so, Father, we just want to give you thanks, and we ask that you go ahead and prepare the way uh, for us this coming week and every week, uh, that we would be able to step into the things that you have planned for us. Help us to always be thankful always have this attitude of gratitude that's on our hearts and in our minds. We love you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.